An unknown love story during slavery. How did a mulatto black man become the most desired lover of high society white women during slavery? A never told story that took place in one of the first slave colonies such as Virginia, a state that is part of the United States. A type of story full of drama, mixed emotions, revenge, lies and, above all, the story that has been told up to this point. The white women, apart from paying to satisfy their sexual fantasies, paid much more for the mulatto slaves to maintain discretion about everything that happened between each of them. In a night of passion in which a black mulatto slave made love with the women of the high society. But, who was that mulatto black man, who was the desire of white women in one of the most racist and anti-black states of the nascent nation, of America? This mulatto man was born as a result of the rape of his mother by three white individuals. Young men drunk by the way they spoke, but also drunk with power when they are in front of a black slave and even more so when that slave is a young girl, where despite the fact that a type of woman is prohibited for white people, at that moment the regrets and impulses resulting from an out-of-control testosterone, they committed a type of crime against a defenseless woman, a type of crime which was socially punishable. But, unfortunately for that young black girl, it was not legally punishable. It all happened one afternoon when three white men riding horses when she walked along the river, that day. She lost her virginity in the most undesirable way to a young black girl, who naively discovered what it really meant to be a black slave in Virginia, but also as a result of this crime they committed against an innocent girl. Nine months later a child was born, who due to his skin color, was considered a mulatto child, who despite the dark reasons behind his birth, when she saw his face for the first time, happiness returned to her again and she began to see the world in a different way, in which the security and happiness of her little one child, gave to her a reason to live. For some reason, she decided to give him the name Augustus. Name which may or may not be relevant to this story associated with slavery. When she decided to give him the name which means great. The mother never imagined that being a colored child was what really made him great in a society that saw blacks as inferior. But, in the case of a mulatto child, everything was different. A black child, who was a product of racial miscegenation, resulting from a rape by a white man on a black woman, his character of being physically hybrid, someone who had the best of both worlds, but also the worst, when talking about the behavior and attitudes of black people and the behavior and attitudes of whites, but also the physical differences in which this mulatto child inherited white characteristics. Augustus, despite being the son of a black slave woman, who works as a domestic worker in the big house, was used as a playmate because he was a light-skinned mulatto boy. He was used as a playmate for the plantation owner's son. As in all plantations where the majority of the population were slaves, adolescent boys and girls began to take the first steps in sexual activity as a result of hormonal impulses. Because, despite racial differences, Impulses resulting from uncontrolled hormones affected adolescents of both racial groups at the same age. As a light-skinned mulatto boy with a smile that captivates girls, with curly hair, whose name was Augustus, was the desire of all the black girls on the plantation. For some reason, many white girls in the city knew not only about this mulatto boy's reputation for attractiveness, but also about his ability to make girls fall in love with him. There was one girl in particular who was interested in meeting this very famous mulatto boy, who was the talk among all the girls on the black or white plantation. There was one beautiful white girl in particular who his white foster brother really liked, as he was the plantation owner's favorite son. But despite all the interest shown towards that white girl, for some reason, she didn't pay much attention to him. On the contrary, she showed interest in listening to the story of the mulatto boy, who was good at seducing the hearts of black girls. As a result of a close friendship between this curly-haired mulatto boy and the white girl, the hormonal impulses of adolescence betrayed him, and he ended up getting that white girl pregnant, the girl his foster brother likes. 
When both the white girl's parents and the foster brother found out about the white girl's pregnancy by a mulatto black boy, popularly known as Augustus, or ladies' boy, you can imagine the problem that this unwanted pregnancy brought to both the white girl whose reputation fell to the ground and the black mulatto boy, who impregnated a girl in a society where relationships between people of color and whites were prohibited. As a result of the pregnancy of the white girl, Augustus was sold in the slave market along with her mulatto son, as punishment for breaking an unwritten social rule that prohibited a black boy from having any type of romantic relationship with a white girl, much less getting her pregnant. As a way to save the dignity of the white girl and to avoid gossip among the upper class about the promiscuous life of a girl who does sleep with a slave boy, and even more so when the son of the slave owner, a product of the unhealthy zeal that demanded that his father, as punishment, sell the servant's son in the slave market. It did not matter what the pleas of Augustus' mother before the slave owner, who had decided on the petition of another slave owner, who wanted the young black man who took his daughter away to be punished in the most severe way, for having dared to put his eyes on his daughter, for whom castration was the worst punishment, but his owner chose better to sell him in the slave market and save his manhood. The young mulatto is bought by a white slave owner in the market in the city center, where slave merchants sold people as human merchandise. Augustus, as the mulatto boy was physically a strong and attractive man, he was bought to be used as a seed, who should impregnate the black girls on the plantation as a way to increase the number of slaves. His physical attractiveness as a man was used, as the main tool on the slave farm, where the black woman wound up with her most precious treasure. Augustus was an attractive and strong man but he also had certain physical qualities that other slave men did not have, he unintentionally ended up being his owner's lover, simply because of her husband, whom he had forbidden relations with one of the favorite black slave women, without caring if she liked or not what her master was doing to her, forcing her every time she wanted to have a sexual relationship with him. Something that high society women have with poor women, is that they tell everything among themselves, and during slavery women had that same behavior, of being gossips among themselves, reasons for which, the way he pleased the man's wife, a slave owner, reached the ears of all her white friends. Women of high society, who wanted to satisfy the erotic fantasies that some had hidden in which to lie in bed with a black mulatto man making love, enjoying the fleeting sensual movements and touching each of the physical sexual attributes known to all of them. That special type of man, which was part of the erotic fantasies that many of them had. Due to his reputation as a good lover who satisfied the sexual needs of a woman, this mulatto black man became one of the most desired colored slaves by the white women of high society, who paid for service when they indulged in every erotic fantasy that each one of them had. As a result of August's reputation as a great lover, often of white women twice his age, he also had the opportunity to avenge the rape of one of the men, when he became involved with her wife, who, apart from satisfying her as a woman, made her fall madly in love with him. The mulatto black man, in revenge for the rape of his mother, had sex with the woman in the same bed as the rapist of his mother, had made love with his wife. A white woman of high society who paid the black mulatto to satisfy her sexual needs because her husband did not please her in bed. One of the great ironies of this forbidden relationship, for two reasons, the white woman from high society is cheating on her husband with another man, and the second thing is that this man is a person of color, which is also prohibited because Augustus, a mulatto man, the product of racial mixing between his black mother and a man white man, is having sex with the wife of a white man, who could be his biological father. A strange relationship in its nature, since Augustus is having intimate relations with a woman who can be considered her stepmother. Why does the white man, to save his honor as a husband deceived by his wife, not intervene and end the intimate relationship that Augustus has with his wife? The answer is, when the white man, when he learned the story of Augustus, there was a good chance that he was his son, a son who could be considered illegitimate outside of marriage, and a man, who values his reputation in a puritanical society. But worst of all, 
it was the product of a rape, and it was a type of story from his past that he couldn't afford for everyone to know about. As a result of that mistake made by him during his youth, he now has to put up with the fact that his wife is cheating on him with a man of color, someone who could be his biological son. You could say that Augustus was blackmailing not only his biological father to avenge the rape of his mother, but also the white man. Apart from maintaining silence the cheating on his wife with another man, who could be his son, also had to pay a large sum of money to Augustus to keep his mouth shut so that the white woman with whom Augustus was sleeping would not know about that wild act of a husband. When he was a young man, who, in a moment of drunkenness, along with two other friends, raped a black girl, who nine months later, she gave birth to a mulatto child, the product of that rape, named Augustus, who at that moment was sleeping with his wife. Augustus only saw the white woman's husband, who could be his father, as another client who had to pay to receive the pleasure that Augustus could offer her as a man, who in bed had the reputation of fulfilling the erotic fantasies that every woman has, it doesn't matter if she is a high society white woman or a black woman he likes. Just like other white women, they had to pay for her service, in the same way that the woman who could be her father and mother to him, also had to pay if she wanted to go to bed and spend a night of pleasure with him. As a woman of high society respected by everyone, if she wanted to sleep with that mulatto black man, who was the man most desired by many of the white women of high society, whether married women or single women without a husband, had to pay. She knew that Augustus did not love her, he did not desire her, she was a type of boring woman who was twice his age, which was why this type of forbidden relationship had no future. She knew that he was taking advantage of her weakness as a woman, a weakness that cost her a lot of money, every time he bought expensive clothes, high designer clothes and gave her large sums of money, simply so that Augustus would always be by her side, and he had no time or opportunity to sleep with other white women, who paid for his sexual services just as she did. And all because she did not resist making love with a colored man, who could be her son, not understanding that for Augustus, she was simply an object of pleasure, but also a huge bag of money. Augustus was so good with women as a lover, that there was one of the white women who was a client of Augustus who, during a moment of fighting with her husband, suggested to him that she was being unfaithful to him with another man. A man who had made love in such a loving way that her husband had never made her feel it before in her life. In the way he kisses me. You never kiss me in the soft way he touches me or when he caresses every part of my body, which is something he has never done. He tells me in my ear the beautiful things that a woman wants to hear from her man, something that you forget to do. Finally, when his body is on mine, at that moment of last pleasure, he makes me feel like I am flying in an erotic dream that I wish would never end. In reaction to what his wife said, an influential man who owns one of the largest and most prosperous plantations in the region, when he found out that she, his wife, was sleeping with a black mulatto man, named Augustus, he put him in prison, alleging that the mulatto black man had seduced and raped his wife. When the judge heard the arguments against Augustus, he told that honorable influential man, that there was not much he could do, that the only person responsible for his wife's deceit, by sleeping with mulatto black man was because he could not satisfy his woman in bed. The judge, in the same way that he condemned the behavior of the husband of an unfaithful wife for not making her happy in bed, in that same way, directed his gaze and pointing to Augustus, motioning him to approach the stand, using soft words in a low voice. I know the type of man you are who does not care about damaging a marriage, sometimes respecting family without thinking about the social and moral consequences of being considered a sin when a woman is unfaithful to her husband. And all for a few coins that women, who are sexually dissatisfied or emotionally angry with their husbands pay to fill that uncontrollable desire, that some women have. Augustus, I don't care what you do in bed with your life, but the next time I see another husband accuse you of seducing his wife, as a judge, I will have no other option, than to send you to prison for raping a white woman type of threat from the judge, 
which at that moment created a great impact on him, but also forced him to examine the lifestyle he chose. When he became a person, who was considered a prostitute who sold his body for money and gifts. To any high society white woman who can afford it, regardless of the immorality of this type of shameful behavior coming from a mulatto black man who should know better. For several weeks, Augustus thought about the words that the judge told him about the way he made his living, without thinking about the consequences. Maybe that's why. One night in particular, Augustus was pretending to be having a good time in a restaurant in the center of the city, a place so luxurious and exclusive that very few whites men can afford it, much less a free man of color can afford it. And let's not talk about a man of color, who only lives off dissatisfied women, bitter and resentful. For having husbands, who are good at making money but not at making love, making them feel that they are special, and women, who pay for their service. On that side, Augustus showed the appearance of a happy or lucky man, who made love to so many rich and influential women, who wear the styles of clothing that money can buy, but deep down many of them were not happy in nature of life they were living the same as him. Augustus was looking into his thoughts, asking himself dozens of questions, as if searching for an answer to a situation that was drowning him internally, at that time of year when the cold breezes of the night remind you, that they are ending the season and giving way, to the cold breezes of autumn, maybe within himself, he is looking for a change in his life, a life which until then was only based on many lies, the ones he tells white women, but also what he tells himself, where having sex with high society white women, who only saw him as a sexual object and not as a human being, were something that bothered him deeply, someone who at times wanted to be loved, not used. But, as the son of a slave woman and a white man whom he does not know, it was time to leave behind the pain, anger and need for revenge or retribution against the white people, who raped his mother and redirect his life along a new path, where he would be a male prostitute, who take advantage of women are something of the past. Suddenly, it entered that place, where only the rich and influential visit, a beautiful, extremely attractive and sophisticated black woman, accompanied by a white man, who, due to his appearance or the type of expensive black suit that he wears, there is no doubt, that he was an extremely rich and important man, who entered accompanied by such beautiful black women into his classist society, where blacks are seen less than whites. How special is that black woman, that this white man carries in his arms? She was the first thing that came to mind. But, how for such a rich white man, carries such a spectacular and sexy black woman in her arms? It was the first question that came to Augustus' mind. At that moment of deep thought, about the meaning of his life, something caught his attention. And the first thing that came to mind was the question of the arrival of a beautiful black woman, asking himself, is this black woman the wife of this rich man or is she just a companion, who, like me, only pleases her partner for pay. I don't think so, he responded to himself, while he didn't take his eyes off that beautiful black woman. A woman who, at that moment, without Augustus realizing it, began to be the owner of her heart. Augustus, the black mulatto, with all the money that he earned by sleeping with white women of high society, bought not only his own freedom, but also the freedom of each of his brothers and sisters, but also the freedom of that son that he had some time ago, who was growing up without his father and white mother. Augustus, despite all his conquests and having all the most influential and beautiful women of high society at his feet, had not found his true love, until that moment sitting in the restaurant, a simple woman, a black woman socially unknown, conquered the heart of a man, who owned the hearts of many white women who, despite being a man of color, was part of the erotic imagination of many women of the time, whether white, black or mulatto, just like him. But everything changed when, for the first time in his life, he felt something about himself, which was a type of feeling that he had never felt before and even less in the presence of a black woman, but something told him, that this black woman was special. A woman who made a great impression on him, 
who did not know what to do when the mixed feelings of happiness and fear took over his body and mind at that moment. Augustus, as a man, must face the greatest challenge of his life, when he must win the heart of a black woman, who is controlling his heart, without her knowing it. If you made it this far, thank you so much. This is the type of story that I will continue to tell in the near future. Lady and gentlemen, if you like this type of story, please subscribe to this channel, give it a like, leave your comments and share this type of material, as a way to help this channel.